Gig Gab, the show for working musicians, episode 278 for Monday, November 2nd, 2020. Folks, and welcome to or welcome back to Gig Gab, the show by for and about working musicians here in Durham, New Hampshire. I'm Dave Hamilton. Here in Napomo, California, it's Paul Kent. And you folks, I want to start this episode by asking you, please send us your feedback. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. It is the best way for us to tailor this show to you. It's a great way to be interactive. So I, I know we say it at the end, but sometimes, you know, the episode's finished. You're like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I don't need to hear the very bitter end. Like, you know, you've heard the song. Like, it's fine. You know, we always say always <laughs> be performing. I get it. So let me just say this up front. Feedback at giggabpodcast.com. It's also the, one of the best parts of doing this. I mean, I love my chats with you, but when we hear from other people, it is just so fun, to, just that connection that we really kind of are shades of difference, but we're all kind of at the core, figuring out how to get our bands to be successful, how to get gigs, how to improve our craft. It, it is really fun for us to hear yeah. um, what you're doing out there in the world, whether you're in the United States or anywhere. We get notes from people internationally. It is the brotherhood of musicians and it's really a fun thing for us to share with you guys as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We're all in this together. That's right. Yeah, for sure. So I was, I was in it this week, Paul, we talked on Monday and I mentioned that I had, uh, three gigs, uh, this week Two I subbed for nonsense twice. They were all in the same place and with the same people. So that, you know, from a COVID standpoint, that, that was helpful. That was really the only way any of this would actually work, uh, thinking about it. But I, I subbed twice for Nonsense on Thursday and Friday, and then we had uh, Madhouse on Halloween night, and we rehearsed for that. Well, we sits probed for that on Wednesday, and then we rehearsed for that on Saturday afternoon. And I want to talk about the difference between a sits probe and a rehearsal in a, in a bit. So I, I, I realize that term might not be familiar to those of us that haven't seen theater before. So, uh, or haven't experienced theater in from behind the scenes before, but anyway, so four days in a row, I was at the theater nonsense. I was, I think I mentioned it here. I think I knew by the time we recorded this episode last week that I was, a little concerned about this when George asked me to do the sub for it. I asked him, you know, how bad is the show? And he's like, Oh, it's easy. It's easy. It's like, you know, I said, are you throwing me to the wolves on this? He's like, no, no wolves. <laughs> and, and there were wolves in not like any one part was not terribly difficult. I mean, it's, you know, gospel kind of thing, you know, just a lot of two beat stuff and, and that, but there are the show moves really fast. There are a lot of twists and turns. There are a lot of breaks and cuts and hits. And those are the things that it's easy to miss if you aren't, if you don't know the show. So I think it was, it might've been before we did this or, but certainly after this on Monday, I had played through the show once uh, and it did not go well. You know, I, I mean, the first time through is never going to be great, but this was like, it just didn't make any sense to me. I mean, the music did sure. But in terms of how I was going to like sit down and play this, uh, in front of an audience without totally screwing it up. It did, it did not compute. And I'm like, crap. And mm. so then I played it through again um, and it was okay. And then I had to get into madhouse mode. So I had a lot of music swimming in my head and there were a lot of similar things in this madhouse too, which probably didn't help. But so I, I learned madhouse enough to make it through sits probe on, on Wednesday and and then new coming out of that, okay, here's what I need to work on for that gig Saturday, but let me compartmentalize that. And then Thursday morning, I played through Nonsense one more time, but what I decided to do was play it starting with the second act, because I knew I had been giving more of my focus time to the first act, because, you know, if I just sat down and played it all together, I would... You know, the the second act would be at the end. I'd be a little, you know, mentally fried and burned out. And so, you know, probably not as attentive to the mistakes I was making and, and the places where I should probably make some notes. So I played the second act through and thing, it started to feel like it was settling in my bones a little bit. And I was like, okay, thank goodness. You know, like I was starting to predict some things. And then I played the first act. And again, it was the same kind of thing. It was like, ah, I know what's coming next. 
And that was very comforting. And I'm so, I could have, in retrospect, I did not need that Thursday morning rehearsal. I could have sat down and done the show that night and it would have been fine because I was at that point. Yeah. But I didn't know I was at that point until doing that extra, that third run, uh, you know, alone here at home. And I'm yep. so glad that I did because going into the gig, I felt confident. I felt, I mean, I still knew I needed to pay attention. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but, uh, but it, you know, I felt like I knew what I was doing and I wasn't just showing up in hoping like, you know, hope is not a strategy. Right. So it worked out well. And Susie, our, our music director, it turns out we also had a sub violinist on the first night that I played, which would have been Thursday night. And Susie, our music director, who was also the piano player, she was in our ears all night. She has a, a headset mic that's mostly not in the mains. It's, they turn it on in the mains for a couple of bit moments in the show. But for the most part, it's just for us in our ears. And and she walked us through the show. It was great. She was like awesome about it. And I'm like, okay, perfect. And it went really well. I, I, I think I made one minor error on, on Thursday night, but it was like one and it was truly minor. Friday night, we sit down. We don't even, like Thursday, we went through some things ahead of time. We probably spent 30 minutes like talking through stuff. Friday, I show up and it's like, oh, we're in regular gig mode. Okay, fine. You know, Susie wasn't worried about going through anything. I was like, yeah, of course not. You know, fine. And we sat down and started the show on Friday and we got about halfway through the first song and I realized, ah, Susie is not giving me any extra cues whatsoever. Like she counted us in and that was it. And I'm like, uh-oh, <laughs> what am I going to do? And at first I thought, I got to get her attention. Like I need to remind her, Dave's still a sub, you know, hey. <laughs> Susie and I have done a lot of gigs together. In, and so we're really comfortable as humans with one another. And so she was like, yeah, yeah, you nailed it last night. Like, don't worry. I th I'm sure that's what was going through her head or something else was going through her head. I mean, this is a job, right? And you show up and do it and then you go home and leave. But your, you know, your personal life is your personal life. And you know how that goes with your job. Sometimes it's just like, well, I got to get my work done. So I got to get my work done. Sure. And I got to go. Right. You know, so it was clear she was in job mode and I could have pulled her out of that a little bit like, hey, help Dave, you know. Uh, but I realized after we got through the first tune, I was like, OK, wait, no, no, no. I can I can hang like it's going to be fine. I'll I'll be fine. And there was really only one error. In my opinion, it was a bigger error on, on Friday night that I made than Thursday. I blew through train tracks. Um, God, I forget what the Italian term is for him. Big stop in music. You know, it's like it, we had a hit on beat two of the measure and then another hit on beat three. And I played beat three in time, but there were train tracks between two and three. I should have stopped and waited for the cue. But, you know, it's whatever. It's like it's one thing and no big deal. Nobody really cared except me. I was like beating myself <laughs> except up for you. Board. Right. Yeah. But you know how that goes. Like, that's fine. I uh, yep. But yeah, it, that moment halfway through the first song when we hit like the first little tricky section and it was like, oh, there's no Susie in my ears telling me how comfortable I'm going to be, you know, <laughs> like, uh oh, here we yeah. go. Yep. This is real world. Yep. <laughs> uh. So, but it, it was fun to be able to play, man. I'll tell you, um, it was really a, a pleasure and a privilege to be able to, you know, play four days in a row like that with other humans. I bet. Yeah. Oh man, I'm going crazy. Yeah. You know, I, I go up and I, I sit with my friend and, you know, who is learning drums and it's, you know, nice cause he's my buddy and, and sure. he, you know, was working so hard and we're definitely getting there. He actually has another friend who's a bass player and it's, you know, it's a thing, right? A little jam thing. But yeah. the one, it's a jam thing. And then the one time playing with the house records was so fun. But I mean, I don't know, man, there's just nothing on the horizon. I mean, I, and I, everybody right now is certainly in wait mode. I've got, I think last week I got two or three emails from gigs that canceled from last summer, just saying, Hey, we want to put it off to next summer. Sure. But even that, you know, they, they're not sure next summer is going to happen. I did, uh, we got, I got dangled a private gig I was going to do with Mary Ellen and Steve that my acoustic trio and, uh, and, uh, and then the guy decided he wants to put it off until after the holiday. So it's a whole bunch of, you know, hurry up and wait. I, I, like I told you last week, the, the best part of this is I have a guitar in my hands at least three to five hours a day, you know, these days. And, you know, it's fun to see some things that were challenging pieces of music, you know, that are, you know, now, you know, I can tell even after doing this for as long as I have, there's always improvement, 
to right. be made, right? Right. Fun. I, oh. I told you I've, I've been working on, you know, like I don't play Eddie Van Halen style. I don't tap, you know, any of that type of stuff. But I thought, you know, maybe when this comes back, it'd be fun for everybody to do a, a little celebration of Eddie. So I learned a solo to jump, you know, yeah. note for note. Yeah, you said that. And, that uh, yeah. I, 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 now I can't wait to hear it. So that's good. Yeah. yeah. So, and again, that's just not my style and that's kind of cool. And, and uh, you know, just to remind yourself that the art of learning your instrument never stops. I mean, it's just, it's a lifelong pursuit. That, you know, the art of learning your instrument, that is what I was reminded of this week too. Uh, I mean, you know, having to learn these, you know, two different shows and lots of music and, and all of that and nothing that I had ever played before, uh, like that part of it. I, I think if you listen back to a show a week ago, you might hear a little bit of, uh, you know, anxiety and trepidation about the fact that I was staring down the barrel of a week of having to do this because it was a lot to learn. But at no point other than maybe that one point uh, at no point during that, did I say, oh, I don't want to do this. I mean, it, it, if I had thought about how much work it was going to be last week to put in to do all this when I agreed to to do this. And knowing also that I had like, it's a really busy time for us. It turned out the end of October was almost like the end of a quarter with, with the backbeat media of our sponsorship business. And so it was a busy week and, and there were moments where I was like, man, I just, okay, you know, what? I'm going to power through. Cause next week, guess what? I got nothing, you know, <laughs> like I can, I can do this, but I probably would have said no to, to the nonsense thing just, and, and just on the madhouse stuff. But I'm really glad that I did not think about it in those terms, because in retrospect, I'm really glad I did all this. Um, it was fun. It was the first like theater show that I had truly had to read in, I, I mean, probably a couple of years. I, I just haven't been doing a lot of theater, like normal theater. I do Hedwig, but that's not a normal theater show. There's no book for that. <laughs> like literally there's no book for it. Someone after the fact, like after it was on Broadway, someone wrote a piano vocal for it. Um, and then pr published it as, you know, here's the guitar part. Here's the piano part. Here's the bass part. But it was literally the same book just with a different name on the front. Mm. But, but it's, I mean, it's just chord charts. It's not even really like written out stuff. There's a few things written out, but it's, it's, it's not like a traditional theater book. And, and so this clearly for nonsense was, and it was great. I, you know, it was fun reading again. I'd forgotten yeah. how much I liked you know, the challenge of, of doing that and the immersion of doing that. It really is because you have to, you know, for me, it requires total focus. So I'm not, you know, getting distracted by, oh, what's that person over there doing or this? Or, you know, it's like I got to be in it. And that that's fun. So it was cool. Yeah, it was good. That's really cool. So I brought up this term, Paul, called sits probe, which I don't think I even I spell it. S-I-T-Z-P-R-O-B-E. I believe it is okay. a German word. If, uh, if I have not researched this, um, at least not in a while, but I, the first time I heard about it was probably just a couple of years ago. Uh, and and the diff what a sits probe is in theater is when you get the, the music, it's the first time you get the musicians and the actors slash singers together and play through the music with vocalists. So. It's not all that much different from what we would think of as band rehearsal, right? Like, because you get together and you play the song. You're not performing the songs. You are playing them. There's no blocking. No uh, blocking in theater is, you know, people moving and, and all that. Yeah. There's no dancing. There's certainly, there's rarely, if any, lines happening because it's about maximizing the time that you have with the band and the singers together. So it's just, it's just band rehearsal is really what it is. And mm -hmm. Where it, so we're we're used to that as rock and roll musicians. What we're not used to is what I will call rehearsal, because in theater rehearsal, the performance is happening, and you are rehearsing the performance, not just mm -hmm. the playing of. Right, you are rehearsing the performing of this piece and these songs. And I really think we as rock musicians would benefit. I mean, we talk about always be performing all the time, right? Yeah. But how often have we rehearsed our performing? And it's just it like it's just not a thing that yeah. that happens. And and certainly it is a thing that that is a important to our craft, but B, like something we can get better at. It's it, some people are naturally better at it than others. It's as as things go. Some people have had more experience with it than others, and that m might make you better. But like the the idea of let's okay, like we now we know our songs. Now let's go 
play on a stage to no one and and rehearse that. And I yeah. think I think like big touring productions absolutely. I n- I don't think I know they do this. They do it, yeah, for sure. Right, like they're per- they're rehearsing the performance of their show, not the music of their show. And there really is a difference there. And I think you need both. So that's, you know, as I was pulling this together today. I love that. You know, uh, house rockers every year have talked about doing like a tech rehearsal, like yeah, you know, bringing out our full PA, getting a stage and you know, just kind of mapping through everything that we, that we do with regards to a tech rehearsal, you know, in, in uh, this came up often, like when we were going to do an acoustic section of our show, right? And making sure that the acoustic, you know, yeah. we had a plan for, you know, getting a to- a in and out of this. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And, you know, but other things as well. And, but I'll tell you, here's where it breaks down. So this is where uh, always be performing needs to be held up to the light. I find, I don't know that I've ever been in a band, but I know of other bands that are actually better at this. Sure. The thought of like saying to my band, hey, we're going to choreograph this part of the, the immediately you can feel the discomfort. Yeah. Like the thought of, of planning through the, you know, the visual aspects, you know, it, again, if it was just letting the lighting guy figure out what he was going to do in this section of the show, this section, that, that everybody would do. But the, the thought of, all right, in this song, you know, you come to the front of the stage and we'll sing on the same mic. And, and you know, that I, I think, um, you know, the argument I usually get back is, you know, isn't that the great thing about us is that, you know, we just organically do it and we go over <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but it could be so much better. It could better. be better. <laughs> yes. Right. So that is, but that, I, guess, I don't think you're disagreeing on the point that the, what you do currently is the organic thing. <laughs> the, 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 it's where do we take it from there is, yeah. you know, and, and you're right. Most rock bands at, at a certain level, anyway, we don't think about, we can take it to the next level. If only, we rehearse stuff and you know, you go see bands and it may not now it will be obvious to you, but you know, if you haven't stopped and thought about it, like the theatrics of being on stage, some bands definitely clearly put in the time to do this. Maybe not for every song, but you've got a few songs in the set here and there and you put them in, in the right spots or they put them in, in the right spots. And it's like, Oh yeah, they're entertaining us, not just playing music for us. Right. And so I, the, yeah, I don't know. Live, live music is a visual art. That's it, man. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, for so, sure. I, I mean, I, I just love that idea. And it would be interesting to think about, like I had, I had talked to a choreographer actually about coming in and, you know, I said, listen, I got, I got a five piece horn section, different ages, different, you know, <laughs> dancing abilities. A couple of the guys are really good dancers. A couple of the guys are really uncomfortable with it. You know, can we figure out something that looks cohesive and they're, and, this woman was like, yeah, absolutely. Right. And then when I brought it to the orange section, you could, again, you could just feel the resistance very palpably up there. But I, you know, again, we talk always about what is going to make your band different than others. And and it's a pretty hard sell. You haven't seen my sweet home, Alabama, right? <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah. But, but if your sweet home, Alabama in, involves a dance break in the middle, then you but, truly and, and have not seen break, mine. Right. Yeah. I, that's true. And again, dance break would be the, the lampoonish part of what we're talking about. Totally. But literally, you know, if your band thinks about just, you know, simple things and we, you know, we talk again, like no band would say, I don't want cool lighting to my show. And you would love for a lighting director to enhance your show. Why is that enough of a visual? St- like, why not go for it? Why not yeah. be everything you can? Why not have spotlights over here during the solo? Why not, you know, and, you know, why not have like my, uh, you know, we basically have two lines. The front line is me, uh, the other guitar player to my right and our keyboard player. Cause we sing this, the show yep. to my left. Then behind is basically the bass players real close to the drummer and then the five horns. Right. So it's kind of two lines and, you know, the little things over time that I've done, like we call that the three, seven, fun. Paul, that's the three, seven that, formation that's the defense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, just encouraging the horns. Like again, it, when you're uncomfortable with this because you haven't looked at your craft in this way, you know, guys who are in big bands kind of sit in a, in a big band chair, they stand up maybe for their solo, but you know, there's not a lot of blocking to use a theater term. Right. But you know, when I started encouraging them to come uh, up for their solos, come up to the front line for their solos and they get the adult adoration and, you know, audience feedback, that was kind of a good drug to encourage more stuff, which led to, you know, 
sharing with them a couple comments. Oh, I love when the horns do that step yeah. or, you know, it, it, the audience notices it is a, it is a, a sheen of professionalism on your show because live music is a visual art. Yeah, no, it, well, per- perhaps the way, one way to encourage people to get past that discomfort level or, or at least just one way to think about it. I don't know. I don't know how to coach this, but uh, you know, the idea of would you want to take the stage playing an instrument that you had not played before? Right. And, and most people would say, well, I would be really uncomfortable with that. Like I'd, I'd want to have some confidence that I'm going to be able to do that. Okay, great. Would you want to take the stage not knowing how to stand on stage? Like, you know, why are you not thinking about it in those terms? Because it, of course you wouldn't want to get on stage and do a dance move that you had not rehearsed, especially if you've never rehearsed a dance move, if you're not a dancer, right? So why wouldn't you take a lesson, have someone show you how to do this now? Because the idea of completing that successfully on stage and getting the, you know, the reaction from the crowd that you were hoping for, that's the drug, like you said, <laughs> like, that's awesome. So why not practice that and get that? And earn that so that you're comfortable and confident going in and doing this. It'll definitely set you apart from, you know, other bands that have similar, you know, instrumentation and makeups. I mean, if you put that posture and again, we use dancing and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of listeners like, you know, I'm going to dance. I'm a, yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. Right. That that is, that is the far end of the, of the, of the premise. Right. Yes. I think, um, you know, but just blocking would even be useful. And if blocking just means, what are we going to do on this song? You know, yeah. who's going to go where, you know, what's going to happen is the lead singer going to go into the audience and what the rest of them is do. If the lead singer goes in the, I mean, all that type of stuff that you think through, you totally. do it organically. And over time you just kind of come up with your shtick anyway. Right. Why not? Why not polish it before, you know, or, or even afterwards, like something, it, you know, it doesn't have to be static either. I mean, a theater show often is static in that, like once you start playing, yeah. you know, performing it. Okay. You leave it alone, but your rock dig doesn't have to be a theater show just because we're sort of borrowing some of these ideas. It, you know, if something magic happens organically in a show, great. Now polish that, right? Like make it so that it feels just as magical every time as the, you know, you want to, it feels like the first time, right? You know, it might not be your first time, but it feels like the first time. And there you go. Like practice yeah. helps. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know, as I was, as, like I said, as I was putting together my notes for the show today, I was like, wow, we got to think about this whole sits probe thing. It, the fact that we have been, all we generally do is sits probe. So I, I did look this up. Uh, it is a German word. It means seated rehearsal in German. So that's an interesting way of thinking about it. Like if everybody's just kind of like doing their, going through the motions uh, of playing the song, that's great and valuable, but it is not what will happen on stage. So why not rehearse what will happen on stage? Mm, I like it. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm in. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. I, I think, I think more of us will be in than, uh, than not, I would think, but you will run into some people, um, you know, with, with your band that will, that will resist this. Well, again, every, everybody has a comfort zone. That's it. And have you ever seen that, that, that um, graphic that says, you know, there's right outside the comfort zone. That's where the magic happens. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You don't want to be so far outside that you're, you know, paralyzed in fear, but you want to be, you want to be able to see the comfort zone over there, but you want to be outside it. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I, I like agree. it. Good topic. I Definitely. I know I know we're short on time for personal reasons today. So I don't want to go into a new topic, Paul, that uh, we've got a few questions that uh, that you folks have sent in, which is great. Again, feedback at giggabpodcast.com. But I do want to take us to what I think will be a quick follow-up. Uh, we talked last week about listener Steve who had had joined a band and and then had bandmates that, you know, the, the whole remedial rehearsal thing, the bandmates that weren't participating and and all of that. And uh, and Steve wrote back and he said, you're right. My situation isn't likely to change. I've tried nearly all of the sc- stuff that you guys discussed in this week. And after seven years in the band, I have realized that it is what it is. And it's not going to change. The thing is, I'm worn out on my cheerleading, which has been my de facto position in charge of quality control and carrying the football. 
Oh, there's all kinds of metaphors here. Uh, he says, it's really hard for me to get involved in a project without putting a lot of energy into it. I've done my absolute best to be positive, focus on the good and improving, but at times my frustration nears or breaks the surface. It's not really fair or productive to badger anyone. Again, it is what it is. Thus, it's really my problem and my struggle. I think short of leaving, the suggestion you guys made to focus my creativity on other projects is the only solution if I can keep that balance. Um, and he goes on to say, I think managing players, abilities, and personalities can be one of the more difficult things in bands because as yep, you guys amen. as you guys stated, there is no perfect. Yeah, it, it, I think you and I are, are similar in this regard, Paul, that anything we put are, you know, that we're involved in, we want to pour our energy into it, which is why we find ourselves in either stated or de facto leadership positions. Um, and, uh, you know, like the one thing I will caution here is be careful not to give yourself permission to phone it in with this band, right? Mm. You, you, right? Because there is the, that fear of the lowest common denominator sort of breeding complacency. And I, I say that because I've been there and, and I found myself like, oh, well, you know, I don't like this band band or this lineup of this band because, you know, this, the, this, the bass player isn't playing the right thing and it, like, I hate it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then it's like, well, I don't need to rehearse the new song. Like th that guy's going to play it terribly anyway. So what's the difference? Right. right. I, and I've been there. And thankfully kind of caught myself after a, a few gigs of that with, with the band that I kind of have in mind. And this was years and years and years ago. And I was just like, yeah, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to take a break. And, and they were like, they were fine with it, but um, be careful. Like it's okay to do what you're doing. Obviously keep playing with this band, keep doing your thing and, but focus your creative energy and, and balance that somewhere else, but make sure you don't give yourself permission to be complacent because in the end, knowing that you're probably like we are, you'll fire at least probably like I am in this regard. You'll find you'll beat yourself up for it after the fact. And it's just not a good place to be for someone who is poured in, who has poured a lot into the, you know, honing your craft and your instrument and all that stuff. So, you know, man, it's all connected. It's kind of like that discussion about that we just had about, mm -hmm. about blocking and, you know, you know, the, the, the core of a successful band is everybody being on the same page. Yes. It's not the musicianship. It's more about everybody having a common vision and being cool. And if the common vision is we're our once a month band, we have some fun, we go out, we play for our wives and friends, and that's where we are, right? Inevitably, there will be that one guy who's like, oh, but we could be so much more. This is so fun. <laughs> and it's on that guy to really remember what he signed up for. Right. 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 You can go ahead and, you know, like we gave a bunch of specific uh, ideas for, you know, what to do with that desire to, to change things and how to, how to politically correctly, you know, present these ideas to people, but it's not everybody else's fault if they don't want to go there. I mean, the, you know, this is what, what you want to be. And I think the ability to kind of look in the mirror and realize you're that guy who wants to do something different and not put grief on everyone else. And the, the degree to which once you've realized that, that you still come willingly, happily to play with your bandmates, and give your best um, is about your own personal integrity as a musician. Right. Yep. I, and I, I love what you said, you know, phoning it in, that's miserable. I mean, that just, it, it reflects poorly on you. It, it, it creates grief. I mean, I, oh, we had yeah. a guy who played, I, I'll tell you a story about the house rockers. We had a guy who was one, I, I think I've told you we've of all the chairs in the house rockers, the other guitar player has been the biggest revolving door. My life got a thousand percent better when Simon joined the band because he was the right guy with the right, right personality. perspective yeah. on teamwork, yeah. you know, just a great guy. But the other guys were, you know, I, I think I told you last week about a guy who wanted to turn us into an original band <laughs> after being in the band two months. Yeah. Um, Would have been we, one we thing if he'd guy. been in the band for seven years and, and had like a, an angle. Not that I, yeah, yeah anyway, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, but um, we had a guy who was an excellent player, one of the one of the better guitar players in the area, and I spent a lot of time making sure he understood what the role was um, before offering him the gig. And the response to me was, "I get it. You know, I've been the lead guy. I just want to be in a band again. It's been a while, and I miss it. And I just you know love playing. You guys play a lot. I want in." Yeah, he was pretty disaffected quite quickly after joining the band. And his disaffection, the way he handled it was, you know, he was very emotional at 
rehearsals, never prepared, mopey on stage. It was, it was a dark little chapter for us. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, again, it, it, the band was out of whack because one personality was so out there from the rest of us at now started out like a great honeymoon. Um, and it, even in the best situations, when, when everyone is a good communicator and states what this band is, whatever your band may be, it can certainly go south. But being that one guy, I would say to this day, years later, that that reputation follows this guy. Oh, interesting. Everyone's a, everyone's a little cautious about, you know, doing a side project or, or anything because, you know, they, they know that that's, that's a possibility. So, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, you are, you are always your reputation and phoning it in is not a good reputation to have. No, no, but I, yeah, that guy. yeah, it's true. I, thankfully that part of that experience for me didn't, um, no one, no, I, I caught it quick enough, quickly enough so that I, it, I did not become that guy that was known as phoning it in. You know, I, I realized it after a few gigs, I was like, wait, this is stupid. I don't want to do this. But, um, but yeah, you're right. Any, all those things that are recurring behaviors or maybe even just one time behaviors, if it was big enough, will follow you around and it will take time and a lot of effort to unravel that. Uh, well, it first takes some self-awareness I think, and then time and effort to unravel that. Uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, that's for sure. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy, but it's good. Like the fact that we are even having this conversation. And, and the fact that, you know, you wrote in Steve and we actually had some feedback from other folks too, about that conversation last week. It like, it shows that we yeah. all care. It's good. Well, yeah. yeah, everybody is there. And, and, you know, I think it'd be it's probably almost like a sociology, you know, like who, uh, Cameron Crowe when he did fast times at Richmond high. And when he did, um, when he did, um, oh, what was the movie where he's a, where there's a writer on, on a tour bus. Almost famous. Almost famous, right? There's some really just great stereotypes of how things happen. You could do that movie about about bands, right? There's, yeah. you know, there's the hyper talented, you know, super moody person. There's the all in, you know, team at all cost person. There's there's <laughs> this is, this there's is the like, people who yeah hang in the back and just wait to see how things are gonna you know evolve themselves, right? Uh, you know, th there are personality archetypes that that are in bands, right? And and, you know, good bands, good bands that stay together. Typically, I understand your strengths and weaknesses and I love you for it unconditionally, no matter what, you know, and we're going forward. Right. Yeah. Or, you know, I can compartmentalize you're entitled to your strengths and weaknesses. But when we're here, as long as everybody's accentuating their strengths, it's a good situation for me and I'll stay. I mean, there, there are, there are tried and true personality types that make up bands. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. It That's, that's interesting. I mean, I, as soon as you started talking about it, I was like, well, Spinal Tap has a lot of this, right? Like they definitely leaned into that's this the a joke. little bit, right? That's the joke. Yeah, exactly. But it's, it's a joke because it's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny because it's true. <laughs> that's the thing. Right. And, and I, you know, I've always said that those songs in Spinal Tap, like if they, if it was not meant to be a spoof, those songs would have been like if Kiss released some of those, like if Kiss released Big Bottom, people would have been like, oh yeah, Big Bottom, that song's awesome. Like, cause it is awesome, but it's, you, you know, you know that they're writing it tongue in cheek, <laughs> but it's still, you know, a song that would have made it. But um, yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Figuring out how to manage all that. I guess that's the, that's the key is knowing how who's who and like you said earlier and you've said many many times for many years making sure everyone is on the same page sharing that same vision or at least buying in knowing that you are going to be sharing that same vision even if you don't buy into it like knowing that that's the gig this particular gig is this and we're all on this page and if you can't be on that page then you just don't be here. It's okay. Like you're still an okay mm. person, but don't be here if this isn't your thing. Well, it's like playing in a wedding band. You, you know, that that is a very specific thing. And there are elements to it that some people may see as, oh, well, that's I sold my soul. Like I I wouldn't I wouldn't want to do that. And that's totally like the fact that some people know that about themselves is awesome because you don't want somebody on that gig that's that hates being there. I remember it wasn't a wedding band, but when I played in the responders 
you know, we wore suits and, and we played 60s music, Beatles, Stones, Motown. We played some Petty and things like that, too. But it was it was that kind of a vibe. And then we were retooling the band in it basically stayed the same. We changed the name to Route 66, uh, but but we were retooling it and adding a, a keyboard player. And I called up a singer that I knew who was awesome. I mean, a guy that I'd probably known at that point. He passed away, unfortunately, but I'd known him for like 20 years great singer. He had played in some, you know, very successful sort of local original bands and things like that, like really had his stuff together. And I said, man, you'd be great for this band. And he's like, yeah, he says, but could you not, I'd love to do it, but could we like not put me in the pictures and not put my name on the website? And it was like, that's really interesting. Like, no, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> like we yeah. can't hide the fact that you're in this band, you know, like we're not going to make it the band about you. Uh, if you don't want like, you know, that, that wouldn't have been the point. It was just like, join the band. This is the band. Here you go. But we can't go out of our way to hide the fact that you're here. Like we're going to be playing gigs. This is, you don't want to be here. You know, he's like, yeah, I guess not, you know, but it was, it was an interesting phone call. Cause he's like, oh, I would love that. That'd be so much fun. But you know, don't tell people <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we're going to be on stage, you know, that thing with the lights and the people in the front and yeah. So anyway, all right. Yeah. Well, that's what I got for today. You got anything else, man? No, I'm glad you're getting some gigs in. Please well, I say got, a little I got prayer some. to the music. <laughs> to the music gods for me that, you know, the clouds clear. I have, I may have a good solo acoustic gig. Uh, one of the v medium sized venues that the house rockers play called me about doing something. Nice. Um, they're doing, they're doing like, you know, they have a decent stage and they do a, a it's a, a bar that also has a restaurant and they do a dinner and a show thing. And so they've been bringing some people in. So I'm wow. talking to them about doing something in March. Let's just hope, you know, let's just hope we're, getting towards open, yeah. you know, once we get in after the first of the year. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I, now I truly don't have any gigs on my schedule until maybe February. Um, there's a theater show I can't talk about yet. Um, cause it hasn't been revealed that I might wind up playing, uh, in the, in the winter, but, but you know, that would be, if I have anything on my schedule, it is that. So yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Yep. All right. All right, but man. You know what? If, if we can't do it, at least we can talk about we it. We can right? talk about it. At least we still have this. That's true, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True that. True that. <laughs> yep. Thanks for listening, folks. Feedback at gigabpodcast.com. We'd love to hear from you. And always be performing. Absolutely. It's a privilege. So perform. At least that's what I'm going to do.